Hello everyone and welcome back to another awesome episode of Historical Recreations where I have a collection of bottles that have been de-labeled here and we're going to transform these into the most awesomest potion bottles for your Halloween display. Now I want to take a moment to say that if you haven't seen my tutorial on how to remove labels, please check the link down below and it will lead to how to take labels properly off of glass and plastic bottles. Now what we're going to do today is with this type of bottle, even in this condition with the label and the glue still on it, we are going to utilize that to create some wickedly cool potion bottles. Are you ready? Let's do this. For materials lineup today, you are going to need a collection of delabeled bottles. You're going to need some white glue and food coloring, a hot glue gun and plenty of glue gun sticks, a nice soft brush, that's a number 12 watercolor, and the lineup for colors today. I'm using a titanium white 901 over here. Uh, this is a gold number 997 and a black number 999 and my favorite of all colors in my prop shop is the burnt umber 926. You will also need some air dried clay today. Everything else is in the tutorial. Okay, once your hot glue gun is warmed up, we are going to start building up a layer around all of this bottle that creates a lip. You see what I'm doing? I'm just adding hot glue very, very gently around this bottle and it looks like it was hand blown. That's what looks so cool about it. Uh, this is layer number one. What we're going to do is we're going to cover up that screw top and we're going to let this cool for a moment. Okay, while that is cooling, I'm going to start applying some more of our hot glue around here to start covering up the 21st century-ness. You just fill it in. See what I'm doing? I'm cementing it in. All a part of prop making. Creating the illusion. I'm going to show you one more really cool trick once we get this all filled in. My little glue, my little glue gun is, is is talking over here. Let's put a new one in there. Okay, now once you get all of that completely sealed around all of it, using the side of your glue gun, look what I'm doing. Yeah, I am smoothing that out. Be careful, glue guns are hot. They are, they are to be respected in all ways. Now, if you see my other tutorials, I've done this technique in several of them and I have just watched a tutorial of a young man in South Korea who uses a 3D printer pen and a wood burner tool to smooth out his projects. So with this in mind, we have just created a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lip and let's let that dry. I'm not going to lie, this used three glue sticks to put all of this on here. As you can see, I built up the, the lips on all of these. Just the oddity and the way that they're formed look like they're hand blown and we're going to then create these make these look even more and more special but we got to get rid of that 21st century-ness and we're going to clean up these little fibers on here other than that let's move on to the next part of our tutorial in creating our potion bottles as you see that we had put the hot glue on there nice really irregular shape i'm using today the favorite color in my collection 925 burnt umber. I'm going to show you what this does with 
Yes, you knew exactly what I was doing. I am going to just conceal that hot glue underneath a layer than it is right now. So it's going to blend right in. So let's move on to the other bottles. Now with our brown bottle drying, we're going to use our food coloring and glue and we're going to transform, I would say, these four long necked glass bottles into something that looks oceanic. And for the next part of our tutorial, we're going to transform these four glass bottles into something that has a sea glass look to it. You're going to have to pour out as much white glue as you can get out onto your paper. I'm going to be using today two colors, the blue and green food coloring in our collection to create a sea glass color. So what it is is one drop blue and if you have a control over it, a quarter drop boom of green. We're going to mix this together. I'm going to be doing some advanced magic here today and you're going to see a beautiful aqua color form. Because you're going to apply it on to your bottle. We're going to create a prop that looks like sea glass that's been floating in the ocean for many, many years. So let's paint up this one bottle and then we'll let it dry. And this is what it looks like when it's completely painted. Notice I also did over the hot glue. Make sure you have all your brush strokes going in the right direction. And very importantly, you're working with glue. What does that mean, Professor M? Well, you need to wash this brush out extremely, extremely well. I highly recommend running it under lukewarm water for about three or four minutes, and then also maybe even soaking it in a glass of water. The reason is, if those glue particles dry on your brush, you'll be throwing a $10 brush away. Okay, other than that, let's finish the other three. Now, just finished painting the four. This glue is going to take 24 hours to dry. You can see right down here, the glue is already drying, creating the illusion of sea glass. Four different shades up here. Look at the imperfections that were created by a little bit of blue that was left over that I didn't completely blend in. Those are flaws that we want to have. We don't want 21st century beautifulness. We want 19th century and 18th century really really uh, handmade hand blown quality and these would be colors that they would have had during the times and for our next deliciously creepy part of our potion bottle tutorial today using this odd shaped bottle that we have in our collection and check this out we've got this little spider and I got this at a dollar store during Halloween as you can see there's a little suction cup on the back of that we're going to be cutting that off and then hot gluing that onto the bottle we're also going to be using tissue paper today to do an overcoat which gives the impression that the bottle was perfectly blown and then put in a mold and then pressed during the 19th century many of the glass bottles that you see in, in museums and stuff were glass pressed and they were made in wooden molds. Things like leaves, mermaids, and faces were often common symbols of the time. We're going to be using the glue and the tissue paper to do the over molding. That's a very special technique. Our color of choice today is a black number 999 and you're also going to need a hot glue gun. Let's go. Okay, I just glued our spider onto our bottle and what I'm doing now is very carefully hot gluing these lay now check that out they didn't take very long I gave it a little bit of blowing on I went like that from a distance and it dried much quicker all right now once your hot glue is completely dried if you just like it like it is well hey you may want to skip this next step but I want to show you what I'm doing so you have a complete uh, range of different types of potion bottles that look really super cool and we're gonna be using the tissue uh, paper now with our glue and let me demonstrate 
next part of our tutorial, we're going to be using our white glue again, a nice soft brush. This one here is a round, I think this is number six or number seven, and our tissue paper, and you can use any color tissue paper you like. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm cutting out a bit of this. I hope you really like this. And we're going to apply our glue and we're going to smooth this out. I'm also going to get a little bowl of water and I'm going to show you what that looks like, which is right here. And we're going to be just after applying, dipping our brush in there and making our tissue paper really soaked. Now there's a lot of staining that's going to be going on here because tissue paper does have a tendency to um, stain. So if you get it on your fingers, don't worry about it. It doesn't take long to get off. Just wash it with soap and water. Now see I'm dissolving the glue into the paper. Right. Excellent. Now out of nowhere, look at this. We're going to take this soaked sheet and we're going to apply it on top of our spider very easily here. Look at that. Now, once you've got the sheet on top of the spider, using the brush again, start tapping it down and the shape will start. To and once I get the shape of the spider, completely done. I'll show you what this looks like. You can see it forming already. You can see kind of a rough spider has been forming. We're going to take a little bit more of our tissue paper. We're going to repeat the process. We're just going to keep layering it on there until we have completely coated our arachnid. It takes a little bit of time, but the, the effect is really cool. Now I get to show you what we did. Here, look at this. I'm just going to just top that down a little bit. We covered the whole entire jar in paper. As you can see, it is still wet and bleeding. This texture that is on here is going to be beautiful once you paint over it. Just feel free to tap it down. What we wanted to do most of all, now this is going to dry and it's going to shrink. We just wanted that essence of spider. And we got it. So perfectly done. Let's now let this jar dry and we'll move on to our other two jars. And for our next bottle here is this one. I'm going to create this into an ameth amethyst bottle. We're going back into the glue again. I'm going to up get enough of this that we are going to create so now I'm going to apply three drops of red. This is going to be nice and dark. And I'm going to draw, uh, apply two full drops of blue. And let's mix this up and see if we like the color. Oh. Wow, those imperfections. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be a little bit more there with that. A bit more generous in our blending. Okay, well, let's apply this now to our bottle. Make it in the same direction that completely painted all the way around. So now let's let this dry. Brand new, brand new bottle of black. And let's paint the whole entire bottle down, making sure that we get in all of the crevices and cracks and completely over every area. 
You were all wondering about that spider jar. Check this out. <laughs> this came out really, really cool with the black on it. Today we're going to be doing the detailing to make it really stand out. We're using a silver number 995. We're just going to need a dop of this and we're going to do, oh, I said a dop. <laughs> yeah, I'll be putting that back in the jar. We are, and I got it on my fingers, of course. What a nice guy. We are doing the br uh, dry brush method today. So I'm just pulling a little bit on the brush. Just enough. No water needed. Charging up our brush here. And the dry brush method is very, very lightly touching and getting the information to pop out. We want just enough information to show that there is a spider there. Make that spider come to life. Look at that. You're going to be doing a whole bunch of these, you know, for Halloween. They're very super easy. Uh, they stand out, you know, stuff that you're going to have for like a long time for ornaments and stuff. This is the type of material that you can actually make and sell. You know, the people were like, I want to buy that. Look at that. Spider just popped right out. Beautiful. As if it was molded right into the jar. Now, with that being said, let's let this dry and we're going to go on to the rest of the jars. This is a part of the tutorial where you want to learn how to make prop corks for these bottles well you're going to use some air dry clay and the brand that i'm using is called amos i love this brand you can do so many things with it the color that i'm using today is white well you can use any color because you can paint over them with these colors however once you learn the technique you're on your way the colors of choice today is a burnt umber number 925 if you want the corks to be a little bit darker. The main three trio is a black number 999, a rich gold number 997, and a titan titanium white number 901. These two colors create the cork. This is for aging and if you want to make it a little bit darker or more antique looking, you would add a little touch of burnt umber and we're going to be demonstrating all that today. First thing is, let's make some corks. That's the part you've been waiting for. Let's make some corks today. Yeah, this is really great. Pinch off enough that you can create a cylinder with. You also have to measure these. You can put these right up to the mouth of the, the bottles and make sure that they fit in there. Notice that they're going to shrink a little bit. The first thing we want to do is create a cylinder shape. Look like a marshmallow. It's very important in this video to share with you, you cannot use these for real food products. So do not expect to use these things, say, at home for anything other than prop making. So this is a world of artificial prop making and a world of fantasy. <laughs> it's not going to be used in the kitchen. And we're going to do as I had instructed. The base needs to be larger. You saw the technique how I just did that? Very easily using the table, rolling it out, pushing more pressure on this side, less on this side. I created a funnel shape. Look at that. Very, very easy. You can also just use your fingers to squeal that down. Very, very easy. Now, with your divot tool, poke those holes in there. We want to absolutely cover the whole entire cork with these divots. Make some serious holes in there because we want the color to pool when it's done. Okay, we want that color in there. You don't have to do the bottom. You may experience a little bit of cracking with air dried clay, but that only adds to the illusion of our spooky bottles here, these spooky potion bottles. And now we need to make quite a few more of these to fill in with our bottles. So let's do that now. Dry 24 hours. Start off with this. I've got my white down here and my gold. I'm gonna blend these two together and you're gonna see a very unusual color start forming there it is wow check it out it is the color of 
cork. Yes, it is. I'm just going to get rid of that gold and blend it in there. I don't know how I discovered this, but it's a really good color for cork. It is just the and we will just turn them out like a little factory here. So let me paint all these up. And once I get them painted, I'll show you what they look like. Also, once these have the tops that are dried, just paint the bottom, right? And then when they are done, we're going to age them. And now, once you get your corks all dried, you can use a nice big soft brush. I'm using a number 12 over here, watercolor. And I'm going into my black number 999 to create a slurry to about one to three. And now the aging process begins. Just layer that color right up on there. Wow, check this out. Just layer it up, get all of that information in the divots and let that sit very nicely the color. Just let them dry. A very important element to add to our aging. We're going to use this on all of our bottles today. I'm going to show you how to do this. We are going to age the bottle. Now you got to remember that we had coated this particular bottle with a glue and food coloring outside. So when you add water again to that, it's going to turn a different color. But once it dries, it will return back to its natural state. I'm using a size 15 brush this time. We're going to go back into the slurry that we used for the corks. And I'm going to water this down to a 1 to 4 ratio. And we want to stain this bottle. Let this just drip on down and stain the bottle and we're going to create the aging process do it lightly and just let it drip and smoke this bottle with the this dry air dry okay we do that again to any and all of our bottles again it's, it just adds a completely new layer to our props Put that right over that label. If it just looks like too much, yeah, just wash it off. Aging done right. I know someone's going to be out there asking, Professor M, what about the spider bottle? Well, I'm going to show you how to do a reverse aging wash on this one. You can use any of these colors I have over here. You can actually use another color. I'm using a pastel stands today. It's a 971. I love this color. If you cannot find this because it's a kind of a hard color to find, a, I would highly recommend something like this, a French gray, which looks like it's a corrosion color. But today I really want to use the pastel number 15. And we're just going to create a really soft slurry over here. And the same as the other bottles, we're going to, yeah, you guessed it, we're going to bring out all of those cracks and everything. I'm not even going to do the spider. I'm just going to leave the spider alone but because we want it to have the, the silver effect on there. But look what we're going to do. Washing the Check it out. And then let's just... Let this guy dry. We have some beautiful labels we have created here. Now I'm using over here a marker. It is a touch marker. You can get these at any really good art store. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to outline the edges in a brown. The brown that I'm using today is a YR21 terracotta and I'm going to just outline the edges of our label. Once you get that established, I would use a bit of burnt umber number 925 over here. We want just a little touch of that, just enough. And we're going to water this down to a one-to-one -one ratio with a slurry. We're going to start aging.
that label. Look at the, the magic begins right there. You get all your labels cut out. Tried and true, a glue stick is for you. A little bit of poetry there. The reason is that once you apply the glue stick glue on the back of the label, you can slide it around on your bottle. And also you can create nicks and dents and tears in the label because it creates kind of a dampness to the paper, which is excellent. And that is another trick of the trade in prop making. Now, with great privilege, I get to show you where we are in our bottle creating stage. Check out this beautiful collection of colored bottles. Now, let's put on our labels and wait till we get to the second stage to then fill them and put in the corks. Here we have the final product. Eight extremely enchanting and wickedly cool potion bottles, gothically yours, Professor M. <laughs>